Okay, so let's use our plotter to find the distance and um, direction uh, between two airports. And let's say we're going to start a flight at Cour de Lone, which is in Section 2, right there. And we're going to fly to uh, Sandpoint, which is in Section 1. Okay, so this is a sectional chart here that we have, and this is from the, the um, Jeppesen Study Guide. Well, the first thing you want to do is take the straight edge of your plotter and you want to position it right through the middle of both airports, at least as best as you can. Now, when you draw your line, make sure to extend the line past the airports. You'll see why in a moment. You don't want to just start in the middle and end in the middle. You want to start about an inch before to about an inch after. So I now have a line between the two airports. Now I want to measure the distance right along the line from the center of one airport to the center of the other airport and you want to use your plotter. And remember you want to use the nautical scale that is on the sectional, can you read that, the sectional scale. This is the sectional side. That's why, that's why um, we use this nautical mile scale instead of on the other side where the nautical mile scale has more tick marks because that's designed for world air nautical charts which are not used on the test, or at least they weren't to, you know, to the point I took the test a few weeks ago. So, you can see that the, uh, the nautical mile um, scale begins right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it right in the middle of one airport and then run it through and look to the middle of the other airport. So it looks like it ends right about there. So it's 30, 31, 32, about 33 nautical miles between the two airports. So I write down on the side distance equals 31 to 33 nautical miles. And always write down nautical miles, NM. Now, you have the distance between them, but now you want to know in degrees the, in what um, direction you have to go in to fly from Coeur d'Alene to Sandpoint. And you can see it's roughly northeast, roughly northeast. And here's an easy way to get the exact uh, direction. Look at where that line you just drew crosses a trusty straight line, like a line of latitude. Here's, an, here's a line of latitude right here. We know that that's perfectly straight. That is, we know that it goes 270 degrees to the left, 90 degrees to the right, because the right would be east and the left would be west. So, we know that our line intersects, oh, let's see, right about there. So I'm just going to draw a big old dot right where the two lines intersect. Then we take the compass, and there's a little hole in the compass where the straight edge part meets the compass part. So you want to just put that hole on top of the dot, and you want to make sure that the straight edge is lining up with that line of latitude. And now you'll see why I wanted the line to extend past. In this case, the ruler isn't overrunning the airport. So you didn't have to go past, but you can see where the line is. You don't lose it in case there's other lines. So you can track this line right to there. Now is it 70 degrees? I hardly think so. See how it says 90 here? See how it says 270 here? They're all confusing. If you look down here, it says 0 degrees, but if you go over, then it goes to 350. So you can't rely on the scale. So ignore it. You know that the most vertical line, the 90 degree line, is really zero degrees. That's north. So if that's zero degrees, then that must be 10 degrees. And that must be 20 degrees. So I would say that the, uh, the true course between Coeur de Lone and Sandpoint Airport is 20 degrees. So you write true course equals 20 degrees. Now I believe it's true course because it's not magnetic. It's, it's based on true north, not magnetic north. 
So you write down, when you write this information down, you make sure to write on the side that the distance was 33 nautical miles and that the TC, the true course, is equal to 20 degrees. And that's how you use your plotter. Next I'll show you how it's used in an actual um, example from the test.